Drake is being criticized by some of your favorite hip hop, you know, uh, aficionados, Ebro, DJ Academics. They're all very old men now, and they're picking on Drake. And they're saying that Drake is, and this is from TMZ Hip Hop. Who knew that existed? Drake is severely neglecting his responsibilities to the hip hop community while also being the biggest rapper in the game. At least that's what several of the top gatekeepers would have you believe. Elliot Wilson, who I don't know who that is, but he says it would be great to hear Drake speak to us again, even if it ain't me. I mean, Drake doesn't really speak to anybody, but they're upset, some of these guys, that Drake went on some TikTokers podcast, and she's wearing Canadian clothes, so I'm guessing she's Canadian. She's looks like she's, you know, ripe with anxiety, as any good TikToker, Gen Z, or would. If someone um, was like, oh, let's take a look. have you ever heard Kiki, Do You Love Me by, like, Tyga? Yeah. You would be like, you would fully be convinced. Absolutely. There's no, okay. There's absolutely. What's your favorite Tyga song? Is he married to Kylie Jenner? So she doesn't know who Tyga is. Drake's disgusted by that, as you can see. I think it'd be hilarious to interview Drake. But the idea here, Eric, is that Drake doesn't speak to enough hip hop um, podcasters like Ebro and like, uh, who else did I mention there? Ac- Academic academics. Surely he's not speaking to Vlad, who would, would surely, I'm sure, would be upset by this. He's instead. Well, they speaking, they would you know, be like, upset. They would be upset if he spoke to Vlad. Vlad not they? getting a pass in this. Yeah. Vla- yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I just want to say that the idea that he can't go on some stupid TikTokers podcast. And, you know, try to reach this younger generation. Listen, Drake's been around since what, like 08 or something, Eric? And they have a problem with Drake going on some TikTokers podcast where they're wearing blankets and she's about to have an anxiety and panic attack. She's ready to start sweating and call the police on him because she's so Gen Z. He can't go on there and try to reach a new audience because he doesn't really go on anything. As far as I know, he appears here and there. It would be hilarious to interview Drake. I What's her name? Applaud, um, I, I'll find out in a second. I would applaud anyone who got to interview Drake because it'd be hilarious. I'd ask him about the school shooting in Degrassi. I'd ask him about like the memes about him crying in the shower. Um, I'd ask him about so many things. And Bobby Althoff. Althoff. Yeah. I would ask him about so many things. And they're really just hating. But isn't that what they do, Eric? It reminds me of a very great clip of... Joe Budden, who's one of the most angry old men rappers of all time, talking to Lil Yachty, who is a nice boy, a nice young man. Don't particularly care for his rap unless it's written by, um, what's his name? He does all the bank robbery songs with him. Um, T Grizzly, when T Grizzly writes his lyrics, it's okay. But Joe Budden's talking to Lil Yachty and, you know, just giving him shit about not supporting the culture and not saying the right things and not rapping about the right thing. Well, Lil Yachty's in like T-Mobile commercials and, you know, selling cereal, making a lot of money. And he's just like, please, Joe Budden, just chill out. This is what I get from even Vlad. You say they won't accept him, but academics and these guys, they're just so angry about anyone. And if you think about it in any other genre, that would be. It's the equivalent to angry old basketball player just being like, I don't like the way Steph Curry shoots threes all the time. I don't like the way they're they're shooting so many threes. It's stupid now because they're making way more money and way more popular than them. That's what I feel like. The Steven Jacksons, the Kendrick Perkins, the players that nobody cared to listen to back then, but are now just haters, so people like to hear them talk. All right, just for once, stop pretending. You're on the computer anyways. You always got your cell phone in your hand. So just take a quick moment, sign up to the Patreon, patreon.com slash uopod. You will not regret it. You're going to see us fly off the handle and say all the things that we can't say on YouTube lest we be kicked off and shunned from society. So sign up to the Patreon. Appreciate it. Okay. Well, first of all... um, We'll never know. We'll never be able to set this in stone. But I can almost guarantee you that if Drake talked to Vlad, those Elliot Wilson and academics would not like that. Maybe academics, because academics is a little bit more common sense, right? Academics, he he notoriously made the switch to Rumble, right? So he's getting a Rumble check because he had videos 
on YouTube. Look, I, I used to follow academics before he was, okay, maybe he's not a household name, but I mean, I remember when academics had maybe, a, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand. He's now got five million or whatever on YouTube. So academics might be okay with Drake talking to Vlad. The rest of the guys, Elliot Wilson and Ebro are deep into the matrix. Okay, so Vlad, white man, bad, doesn't matter. They're not going to applaud him. A, a whole bunch of other rappers that are up and coming are going to call Vlad a fed because he asked probing questions that some people are stupid enough to answer. <laughs> and um, I was curious about this because I saw this. I don't know when these articles were written or like how, but I remember when this these articles first, you know, it took over my algorithm, right? I don't even use TikTok, but it's, she, you know, there is, this girl is all over my Instagram algorithm. Somehow, some way, she's obviously broken through. And I remember genuinely thinking, why are they showing me this? Why, how did this girl become so popular um, uh, almost overnight? Like, I'm not going to sit here and say she didn't put in any work because I'm sure she does a lot of this TikTok stuff. But, you know, just one day, she's absolutely everywhere. And they're showing me, yeah, with Funny Marco, who's, you know, huge... Uh, Instagram or I'm not on TikTok, so I can't testify to what's going on over there. But I will say it seems most of the time when you see a big Instagram account and then they have listed in their bio, you know, quadruple the amount of followers on TikTok. So you could have 100,000 on Instagram and you're going to have 500,000 on TikTok because that's just how the algorithm algorithm is working, uh, apparently. So I think she's a comedian. I am not I don't her shtick doesn't is not funny to me it's this sort of like super duper deadpan you know like i never heard of drake like what who are you you know female I, comedian stereotype like 6a basically oh uh, this is how i talk yeah 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 e exactly so i didn't and i'm not trying this is not a jab at her i'm not taking anything away from her but i i spent i don't know 30 minutes looking at her account and the jokes are not meant for me Right. Like it's clearly her. She's got her formula that obviously works for other people. But why it's so popular is beyond me. She's got like lopsided boobs. I think she's got kids. So like her she's selling these weird like maternity bras or something like that. Um, so shout out to her getting 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 paid for that. And as far as Drake is concerned, uh, it is it is uh, curious as to. You know, whatever agency she's working for, they put them in touch and got that done. But you also mentioned Little Yachty. Um, these guys could, I mean, they, they're, they were good. They had their moment. Drake is obviously, I mean, Drake comes on my iPod on shuffle, iPod, iPhone, whatever, um, on shuffle. And I remember how, how many great songs he has. So shout out, you know, America's hat. But it's over, bro. Like it, it you don't Drake could never could could live the rest of his life and not put out one more song and he would be absolutely cemented. It wouldn't even matter. So I guess what he's doing is taking this this other lane and outside of all that and Yachty doesn't even hold the candle to that. The, him and Yachty are buddies. That's probably if I had to guess Yachty probably co-signed this girl. Like, oh, okay, all the, you know, Yachty might be 10 years younger than Drake and he knows about this girl. So when they're hanging out, Yachty could say, yeah, yeah, go on the podcast. She's a cool girl, whatever. And, and you know, that's just me guessing. All that said, they're both completely compromised for one thing alone. And I'm sure you know what it is. Do you know what it is? Who? Who are we? Drake, Drake, Drake and Yachty. Yachty. Yes. Compromised? What are they? Uh, Why would black? those two? I know that. <laughs> I didn't realize Drake's only 36. He looks terrible for 36. Yeah, well, he's 45 and Lil Yachty's 25. So you're right. I thought I was about to make fun of you. What are they? Ha what am I missing? Nail polish. Right. I was actually talking about that today. Um, who was it that it was some guy? My girl was watching some show, uh, one of the sex Island shows, you know, those, those shows where they have the couples meet the singles and one of these, one of the black guys on it um, had painted nails, like two of his nails were painted. And I was like, Eric said, uh, for a black guy to have his nails painted, that's that's the step into the direction that you don't want to go. Absolutely. That's the first so you're step really to your... affecting the cult, the Canadian culture up here. 
the white people watching trashy reality TV shows. You're affecting it. Hey, I do my part. Turn it up, Jordan.